Back at the 2018 SEMA show, Rugged Ridge introduced an awesome new set of replacement DRLs for the Jeep JL Wrangler and JT Gladiator, and they were designed specifically to be used with a trimmed or chopped set of factory fender flares. This is actually just a uh, SEMA show prototype to gauge interest, but one of the things we just went in and we trimmed out the uh, factory Rubicon flares, which is a very, very clean look, and it's something that we want to explore further to see if that's the direction we want to take. Instead yes. of being gimmicky, do something clean, something that looks like it's supposed to have been on the vehicle from the start. Unfortunately, it would take them a whole nother year to put these things into production, but better late than never, and... And just as promised, they sent us out one of the very first sets for installation and testing. Now I should note that this kit did not come with any instructions and I knew that was gonna be the case. This is a brand new kit and uh, we were just happy that they were able to send us something. Fortunately, I know the guys at Rugged Ridge pretty well and after talking to them at length about what needs to be done, I have no doubts whatsoever that we can get this thing installed. It should be pretty easy. This is crazy. Guys, use enough tape here? Oh, yes. Wow, look at these guys. Look really nice. While it probably isn't necessary to remove the front wheels in order to do this install, I'm gonna go ahead and do it anyway, just to make it easier and to help things, help things out on the camera to help you guys see what's going on. This is always, we're gonna go ahead and grab a 22 millimeter socket to remove the lug nuts. One, two. Of course, we've got Gorilla Nuts, or these spline nuts that came with the wheels that we have on now, so I'm gonna use a key for that. All right, so now that I've got the wheel removed, I'm gonna go ahead and use a 10 millimeter socket and remove four bolts underneath the fender, securing it to the body. Now we're gonna grab an eight millimeter socket. And there's one small bolt right here on the forward edge of the fender that we're gonna remove. Now we're gonna use a trim pry tool, just like you see right here, to separate two push tabs, one that's located right here next to the body mount. And there's actually one that's supposed to be back here uh, behind the DRL, but as you can see, I'm, I'm missing that one probably because our tires were big and they were rubbing at it. But um, there would be one here that would need to be removed, but we're gonna grab this one for now. Just pry it out. All right. Okay, so now that we're getting pretty close to taking off the fender, I'm gonna go ahead and lay down a packing blanket ahead of time so that I can lay it on it without doing any damage. All right, so there's one last fastener that needs to come out before we can pull off the fender, and it's this little um, push rivet that you can see right here. I'm gonna go ahead and use a Phillips screwdriver to extract it. Um, as you can see here, I did do some trimming to my fender liner in the past. This would normally have wrapped around and attached to that point, but I'm gonna go ahead and remove it anyway just to show you what needs to be done. Of course, this is just spinning in place, so I'm gonna go ahead and use a flathead screwdriver just to give it a little bit of bite. There we go. There, 
You can see that's how it looks. All right, so moment of truth. We're gonna go ahead and remove our front fender now. And essentially, it's just being held in place by a series of push tabs. Um, the best way to remove it that I've always found is that you grab it from about the front to the middle of the fender, and then you have to pull abruptly. About, just think that you wanna pull it out about an inch. There. And then we're gonna do the same on the back side now. There, you can take a look now. You can see these are the plastic push tabs that have been holding it in place. So now that we have the fender separated from the body, we're gonna go ahead and grab the wiring harness and pull back this little red tab, which is locking it in place. There we go. And then we're gonna go ahead and squeeze and separate the plug. Now we can put our fender upside down on our packing blanket. So there are a few different ways for you guys to install these DRLs. Obviously you can go ahead and cut off all these rivets that you see here along the edge of the fender and then just take this inner fender liner and chuck it. That'll give you all kinds of room to stuff bigger tires uh, without having as much lift. But for our purposes, I actually like the inner fender liners and I'm gonna do everything I can to keep as much of it in place as possible anyway. So what I'm gonna do first is open this up and I'm gonna take this one plastic rivet that you see right here, that's actually gonna need to go. So I'm gonna take the yeah, trim pry tool here, see if I can't separate that. Okay, go ahead and just cut that off from here. Okay, with that off, I'm gonna go ahead and start separating this wiring harness. Now that we've got that off, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this flap forward here. And then you're gonna see that there are a series of one, two, three, and there's a fourth screw down here, securing the DRL to the fender. And we're gonna go ahead and use a Torx 25 to remove them. Okay. Those out, we're gonna go ahead and switch out to a Torx 30 bit. And there are three bolts, one, two, and three right here that we're gonna remove next. all those out of the way, we can take this plastic piece here. See, this can get tossed. Okay, so now that we have the plastic mount removed, there's actually one more screw that we're gonna to need to remove. This is actually securing the side light right over here. We're gonna use a Torx 30 to get that out. Okay, and as you can see here, the DRL itself is actually still firmly in place and attached to the bottom of the fender. And that's because there is a piece of double stick tape on the top of the light securing it to it. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna grab the light and just pull off. There, you could see the remnants of the double stick tape that was securing it in place right here. All right. All right, now that we have the DRL out of the way, we can start focusing our efforts in removing this lower part of the front fender. And to start that off, we're gonna grab a screwdriver like this and push down on this tab so that we can separate this clip. Okay, that's out of the way. And then we're gonna take our utility knife and we're just gonna go ahead and cut this part right here. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and cut off this part of the fender as well so we can get rid of this whole piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the Dremel with a cutoff wheel as you see here. And if you haven't already noticed, I am wearing some new threads. This is actually for our JT Gladiator, as you can see here. 
These are all available on our Teespring store on YouTube and there's a link right down in the description. All you need to do is click on it and you guys will be supporting us by wearing some of our threads. All right, so ultimately what's gonna happen is we're gonna cut it probably straight across over here, but I'm gonna actually cut it further down just to give me some room to work with just in case I, I'm not 100% sure where I need to be. That's out of the way. From here, we're gonna go ahead and cut off this plastic piece, kind of in an angle down and then across following this path right here. We're essentially just gonna take off this front clip right here. And just to make sure we're on the same page, we're just cutting off this piece here. We don't wanna go all the way through the fender itself. Since we're gonna be using a double stick tape, like you can see right here, once again, as part of the new DRL system, I'm gonna go ahead and clean up this area underneath the fender where it's actually gonna get attached to. So, take some just clean water, get some of this dust out of the way. And then we're gonna follow it up with some 91% isopropyl alcohol. This will actually be like a degreaser and that'll help make sure that the adhesive sticks really well. All right, with everything cleaned up, I just realized I have one extra tab right here that needs to come off. And you use a pair of dikes just to put that guy off. All right. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and grab the driver's side light. And you can see here it says an L. And this one over here has an R for right. This right here is the driver's side bracket and you can see this is where it would get installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this light, unwind it. We're gonna go over to our Jeep and we're gonna lay this across the top of these brackets that you see right here. And we're gonna go ahead and plug this in as you see, and push the gray clip in to lock it in place. So as you can see here, there are these little holes on top of these brackets. We're just gonna go ahead and zip tie these guys in place. Okay, we're getting close now. We're gonna grab our fender. I'm going to go ahead and reinstall it now. Make sure all your pins are aligned. Snap it in place. All right, so now that we have the fender installed, we're going to have to trim some of the plastic inner fender liner that we have here because obviously we're keeping it. So this hole right here is going to be kind of our guide. We're going to actually come from about this point right here straight across the hole and then we're gonna come back down and around. So I'm gonna go ahead and use a utility knife because it actually cuts really easy. And I'm gonna just cut across to the hole. And then from the hole, we're gonna come down, cut that off. All right, so using our DRL bracket, we're gonna go ahead and place it on top of these mounting points and just kind of loosely, you can see this is where the DRL is gonna be. We're gonna use this kind of as a guide to figure out how much of the plastic fender we're gonna trim away. So I'm gonna use a Sharpie, kind of mark it off. It's about the thickness we're gonna need. Then we're going to take some blue painter's tape just to make sure we know where we're going with this. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and take our Dremel again with a cutoff wheel. Put on some safety glasses. I'm going to take my 
myself a metal file like you see right here and I'm just gonna clean it up a bit. So now we can go ahead and start assembling our bracket. This is the driver's side bracket right here. Okay, so now we're gonna grab a couple of these carriage bolts, a couple washers, and a couple of these nylocks. We're gonna slip these carriage bolts through these squared holes right here. And then we're gonna grab one of these brackets. And you can see this is the double stick tape that we'll be applying to the bottom side of the fender. Slip it on, place a washer on the back, and a nylock. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and use a 10 millimeter socket and we're gonna tighten up these nuts just enough so that there's still enough adjustment in this bracket, but it'll be less to work with once everything's installed. You can still see it's moving around, but they're a little bit tighter in place. All right, now we can assemble the light onto the bracket. We're gonna grab the whole assembled bracket as you see here, and we're gonna grab three of these guys right here. With a Phillips screwdriver, we're gonna come over here and take our light, place it into the bracket. So as you can see, there are these three holes on the back of the bracket. We're gonna take one of these screws, slip it into the hole. These are self-tapping. So we're gonna take our Phillips screwdriver, just start tightening it in place. Grab the next one. And the last one. I'm just gonna tighten them all in place. You don't have to go crazy on this. It's just plastic to hold it nice and tight. And that's how it's gonna look. Pretty sweet. All right, so now we're gonna grab a couple of these longer bolts that you see here. We're gonna slip a washer on ahead of time. Grab a couple more washers and a couple lock nuts. Grab a 10 millimeter wrench and a four millimeter Allen bit or Allen wrench. And then we're gonna go back over to the light. Take this bolt and washer, slip it up through this hole. Take another washer, place it up on top. Take a nylock. Okay, so now that we've got that hanging in place, we're gonna take off the backing off of this double stick tape. We're gonna carefully prop this up. Take another one of these bolts, slide it through the hole. Take another washer, place it on top. And one more nylock to hold everything in place. All right, using a 10 millimeter box wrench, I'm gonna go ahead and try to hold this nut in place. And then use a four millimeter Allen bit to secure this bolt. All right, now that we're gonna squeeze down, make sure we make some solid contact with that double stick tape. Hold that in place. I'm gonna grab a 10 millimeter socket, kind of a long one, because you're gonna reach back here. It might be a little bit hard to see, but the screws that are holding that bracket in place, we're gonna tighten them up now. All right, now we can wrap this thing up. First and foremost, we're gonna take the little tree that we pulled out earlier guy back in and we're gonna take the four bolts that we removed earlier again using a 10 millimeter socket well actually so we're not gonna actually use this one anymore because it's been taken up by the light taking a step back you can see we were able to retain our inner fender liner and now we've cleared up a lot more space here up front with this awesome new Rugged Ridge DRL. I think it looks pretty good. Hey, 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 works, looks sharp. So it's awesome because these DRLs allow you to trim or chop your fenders and still retain that awesome JL or JT look. Looks super factory. Now 
we're talking. With rugged ridge DRLs installed, it really opens up the fender wells. Even though we didn't trim out the edge or remove the fender liner, you can see it really makes our 37 inch tires look really tiny. I think it might be time for 40s.